to knowledge completely. But we have fewer in this category. We all call intuition as a voice instead that that propels us to um, towards this or direction or decision. However, unlike innate knowledge, this voice is not without an instruction from past experiences. For example, intuition may direct us not to eat a certain food, but, but a trip in the memory lane may bring to the surface to surface the, the to surface some food. My dear Farida, sorry to interrupt you, Farida. Yeah, madam. Please, madam. Did you read? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, please. All right. I'm asking you and the whole class, everyone else, to tell me what they read on the intuition deduction thesis. Okay. Okay. So that if you can, don't worry, don't worry. So if you can say it, it will help than reading because what you are reading doesn't come out well. And it is okay. because you are reading it. Huh. Yeah. yeah. So you don't understand it, I suspect so. But you want to respond so that the class doesn't go into trouble, which is fine. Okay. But it's it's fine when you tell us whatever it is that you read, what you make of it. That that one comes out well. Okay. So organize your thoughts again and come. Okay. Is it okay? Great. Yes. John, you. I'm waiting for the rest of the class. John, John, you want to come? You said you, you discussed it, but you want to. You wanted to check with your colleagues. Now speak as if you were John, not the group, and let me hear what you have to say, please. Or any other person. You raise your hand, I call you. I'm making records of it. Joseph, go ahead. So at least Farida attempted. John is on standby. Can you hear me? I can hear you clearly, Joseph. Go ahead. Um, good morning. Um, intuition. Intuition is simply to know or understand something without giving an evidence of it or a reason to discover it. Hello, I listen. Yes, if I can hear you clearly, please go ahead. Possibly also, a, it can also be um, termed as a feeling that one may have, which can either be wrong or right. So as an example, uh, your intuition, that is why sometimes you may see someone and have, from your intuition, you may see for some sense from someone face a kindness or a particular um, characteristics. All right, that is fine. Any other comment? What did you read? Can you see me go ahead? Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, uh, Farida Ibrahim. Still standing by for John Bwedi. Can you see please go ahead? You are muted. Hello, Madam, please, can you hear me? I can hear you clearly. Go ahead. Yes, please. Okay, Madam, so um, giving um, a summary of what I am, um, the intuition or the deductive thesis rationalists um, have said that um, some knowledge is gained through um, a priori, which means that knowledge gained before experience. So, for, ex so for example, um, if you look at the Rene, um, Rene Descartes um, paper, I think, therefore, I am um, he thought of how I mean, he has been deceived by the sensory knowledge and other things. And for him to get, I mean, uh, knowledge or for him to understand himself, he needs to doubt everything. So doing that, uh, I think, is an intuition or a deduction knowledge. So now he came to a conclusion that I think, therefore, I am. And then um, talking about the innate knowledge, they also believe that it's something that um, you have been born with. Is inward. So Very if you good. take, um, if you take, for instance, a newborn baby, for example, you mm. that child, nobody teaches the child um, how to suck breast. <laughs> it's it's it's, okay. it's something that in the child. So 
when the mother put the breast in the mouth, the child will definitely know that uh, it's time for food. <laughs> mm. So okay. I think. Okay, so I, I have lost you now, but I think you, you did fine. So you touched on what intuition deduction thesis of rationalism is, and you also touched on. Yes, you, you went off a little, but I can hear you again now. So I was just commending your efforts. I put a mark down for you, two marks actually. So you commented on intuition deduction thesis, and you commented on innate knowledge and innate concept thesis in disguise. I think that um, that was a good effort. So it shows that this is what you have read, you have engaged, and possibly the group may have discussed that as well in preparation for the class. Good job. Thank you. Let me take Gabriel now. Okay, I see John is back. So after Gabriel, we'll go back to John. Thank you, Kinsley. Uh, okay, Doc. Um, but I want to touch on the innate concept thesis. And then the concept th uh, thesis um, claims that um, we have um, knowledge about certain concept, concepts. An example is the concept of beauty, and um, which Plato explains that naturally, when you see somebody who is beautiful, nobody needs to tell us that this person is beautiful or not. We already know them. Very good. And it is, it is, it is that which Plato used to explain that in the word of form, and that is the original. So what we are seeing physically is just a remembrance of what we already know Very about good. beauty. And that is what is explained in the concept thesis. And the intuition deduction thesis claims that we we have certain knowledge intuitively. Like, but through our instinct, Very and good. we don't need to. Um, nobody needs to. Um, I mean, we cannot defend it like practically about how we come about with certain knowledge. But then, it is by in the, our intuition that we get to know all that knowledge. With the deduction, that it talks about um, giving a premises uh, as an example. If you say. Coffee, uh, all Kofi likes football. If John is Kofi, therefore Kofi likes football. With this knowledge, um, nobody needs to tell us that. We don't need to see, touch it or feel to know that um, if all Kofi likes football and John is Kofi, Kofi also likes football. We can deduce that knowledge from our intuition without any practical illustration. Even if we, we, we can't see or we cannot touch, we can still draw a conclusion because the premises are true. It obviously guarantees the conclusion to be true. And well if knowledge that we don't need to, we cannot give, so we don't need to see it, you mean, we know that it is true. Yes, good. Excellent, excellent. I put a two mark down for you as well. The others got one each for the effort, Casey got two as well. Very good. You touched on the, the one that we are supposed to even be engaging today, which if people have done their readings, then it helps us. You see, we did the intuition deduction thesis extensively last week after we introduced all the three set versions of uh, rationalism, the in, in, innate knowledge thesis, innate concept, innate concept thesis, intuition deduction thesis. If we study the specific authors, then we would even see the application of those versions of rationalism in their in their philosophy. But you already touched on Plato and you touched on Descartes and you even show how Descartes is intuiting and deducing for which reason he'll be called a rationalist. You explain what intuition is. I mean generally I can add a few more, but you, you did what you if I said all backing dogs back, for instance, all backing dogs back. You don't need to know what a dog is. You don't even need to know what barking is. By what I've said is just true. <laughs> all barking dogs bark. They, if all flying jiggles jiggle. I mean, all flying jiggles fly. Whatever jiggle is, it won't matter. If it is a flying jiggle, then it must fly. You see, intuitively, 
unmediated truth. It, it doesn't depend on anything for its truth. The truth is just there, says those who subscribe to intuition deduction. I just know it. So that is what Descartes used when he argued for his own existence anytime he thinks of it. The one we learned in level that was 100 and 200 and we're happy about. I think therefore I, I am going to level soon. From there, then he deduces the existence of matter and the existence of God, et cetera, et cetera. That is what your friend, and I'm even, I'm even surprised because you do it in a very relaxed way. Like there wasn't too much stress at all. Like you were at a tutorial. That is a very good, good, good effort. You also talked about the, uh, the, the fact that those who hold on to innate knowledge thesis and innate concepts thesis, the innate idea folks, whether it is the knowledge as a corpus, a statement, it is wrong to kill indiscriminately, for example, or it is just a term, the concept, beauty. You tell us that they believe or they argue that you know naturally by your nature what you are. You said that I made a note of all that, Gabriel. That was a very good effort. You talked about Plato and you said, so when I see a beautiful girl, the eye is doing the seeing. But it's not the eye that knows it. The eye is only looking at something that I already know. That was your statement, not mine. Telling us that so when when people see a beautiful girl, they don't have to be told. They just have to remember what they know beauty to be already, which perhaps they may have forgotten. And that is a central part of Plato's philosophy that you captured like that. He talks about knowledge as a recollection. You said remembering is the same thing. You are only remembering what you already know in it, inborn by your natural self, nature, what you are naturally. So that like last week when we engaged, I touched on those ones a few, and I told you that it will be funny to ask, why is the dog dog back? Why? But it is a dog. That's what you see. And I saw a grandma. I then a grandma no that's all a grandma. Mini only a book. It is a dog that barks. So when I, if I ask you, why is the dog back? I see if it's strange that a dog is barking. You would rather be strange at my question. You will be uh, surprised at my question. You know, you, why are you asking such a question? But if you were to meet a human being, born fresh, and then it is doing, whoa, 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 whoa. When the mommy pushes the baby, baby and she's doing, whoa, whoa, you say, hey, why is she barking? Why? Because if it is not natural, to a human being to be barking. But it is natural to a dog to be barking. And so Gabriel's very succinct expression, it is unrecorded. So when we play back, we can hear him. Your colleague, he ran a lecture and he did it in two, three minutes on a whole thesis. You know, and that's why it's impressive. Mentioning Plato, mentioning Descartes, of course, Kingsley did a good job as, as well. I didn't want to over elaborate because I was hearing from you, I want to see if everyone has something. But Kinsley also did that. We talked about the baby. You don't have to teach the child. That's what the breastfeeding one. Someone may say that, oh, no, it is a physio, it, it, it's a physical thing, eh? physiological. So it is. It, it can be explained by the brain and its activities and what you tell you. But they can have something they say, which Plato is echoing and any other person that does rationalism is saying that they know already. It's not the act activity of receiving the breast, but they know something already. They know that they must eat, for example. <laughs> so say, oh, they're eating things. It's just the system that feels hungry. So it's a physical thing, physiological thing. It is not a, 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 a no, already known. Something. What about to be in child? No one teaches the child certain things. Others say it's a lie. They just observe and saw it. Sometimes even when they were blood clots in their mother's womb and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm trying to say that these two colleagues of yours, and I'm going to take more feedbacks from you, have to engage the content and come to class with a certain level of competence only to be polished during interaction like this. That's how you build your confidence into the higher levels that you're already in. Okay, so uh, the last bit I put down for, Gabriel, so I think I'll make the mark three. I'll, I'll, I'll make it three for Gabriel now because I put so much down. It's a collection there. The thing is natural to you. That is what the innate knowledge folks say, innate concept and innate knowledge. Concept for just a term, knowledge for a corpus, a statement, a claim of truth. What do they say? They say you already know. 
innate, inborn. How do you know that you already know? You don't have to ask that question. It is natural to your being. That is what you are naturally. And so you naturally, as a human being, rational human being at that, know. And that is where some questions that have been generated by those who oppose that view comes from, like empiricists, for example, will tell you that, what is this thing like? I already know. What about children and mad people who do not exhibit signs of what? Knowing already. They don't show that they already know what is right and wrong, for example. They don't show that they already know uh, that it is wrong to kill indiscriminately. That mad person that threw a stone just lifted a big stone and hit a woman who was selling at somewhere around Sekulos and killed the woman instantly. You say they didn't know that it is wrong to kill indiscriminately like that. Someone is selling it and then you lift a stone. In. If you say all human beings, no, I'm taking my discussion from where Gabriel got innate knowledge and innate concept thesis discussion. That's what we are having. It should be done in 10 minutes, then you are done. Okay. A critique that can be raised, and I say critique, a question, an objection, a concern, a contention, a challenge that someone can raise against those who hold on to the second and the third versions of rationalism. The rationalism doctrines can be presented in three different ways, at least that we discussed last week. The recording is there for you to reference if you if you think we did it. We touched on all three and then we, we emphasized what will make it extreme, what will make it you know moderate, which to what extent will your rationalism be moderate and extreme or, or, or balanced? What are the necessities for you to be called a rationalist? What are the you know the complementary others, superiority of reason, whatever they are, we've done all that. Then we saw the intuition deduction thesis proper. And we said we will study specific authors so that it makes it clearer to see the pattern, the, the characteristics of a rationalist that make him or her an intuition deduction thesis rationalist. Your friend just gave us Descartes and how he depended solely on first intuitive and then built on that to deduce other truths. So he, he adopted the intuition deduction method in his cogito ego summa, what have you. And that is the end of that discussion. If you want further elaboration, then you revise your level 100 notes on Descartes, how he started doubting everything so that the, the senses were rendered useless. They can't give you any information that is knowledge that can be certain, remember, Descartes. Then we moved on to uh, how he argues for the existence of, and that is what, when we take his text proper, we'll look at it, the method, because we are doing rationalism, how he, he adapted the methodology of intuition deduction thesis to arrive at even the existence of the external world. Some few critiques we see there, the secularity and whatever. Okay, but that is Descartes substantively expressing intuition deduction thesis kind of rationalism. They, uh, Plato is also rationalist, but you may not immediately be able to attribute intuition deduction to him. I'm talking about who Plato, no, maybe not immediately. But what, what stands out? So think of what I told about Christianity and Islam or something. Yeah? Within the Christian doctrine or Christian sect, you can have Pentecostals, you can have uh, uh, Protestant, Catholics, Friday ones, whatever. So different versions of Christianity, different versions of rationalism. That's what we are doing. So if I call the Pope, you know that the Pope will be a Catholic Christian. See, if I call a, 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 a Apostle Nyamecha in Ghana, he's a Pentecostal Christian. That's what we are doing. So if I say Descartes, he's rationalist, but a rationalist that pro pro projects a certain kind of rationalism. His emphasis is on a certain kind. Which one? Descartes, we think, is heavily intuition deduction thesis, not necessarily in it. You may attribute innateness to him, but he doesn't project himself as such. But when you see Plato, Plato is more, or if you like, to a large extent, innate knowledge, innate concept kind of rationalist, done in teaching deduction, and so on and so forth. That's what your friend did, if, just in case you didn't see. And we are going to open them out. So the day we take Plato 
And I don't want to be coming to class to come and tell you what Plato is. It's not a good way to learn for a third year. These are seminar texts. You have met them since level 100. So the, we have to be proactive. Okay, so hopefully maybe we are still building this the third week. So people's posturing will, will be leaving level 200 and getting into level 300. Do the readings, engage the content. This is an elective. Engage the course in a very quote and unquote relaxed, you know, when I say relaxed, not like don't be serious, no. Engage, you read it. In Uber class, we discuss, we talk about it like we are doing now. Then it, it gets entrenched. Not that you come to class to hear me say it, I put slides there. Generally speaking, now not to everybody. And so, well done, uh, Gabriel. Thank you. Well done, Kinsey, as well. And well done. Uh, I think Joseph also gave a good attempt. And Farida and John Boy do have at least responded to queries, so they all get something on file. I want to know if someone is. Oh, John, your hand went up. Maybe you want to add something that will, will give you. Uh, an additional mark or so. If not, if any other person wants to say something, I'm glad to take your comment. Yeah, 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 no, no, please, I wanted to add something. Please go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. That's um, John. Yes. Um, no, please, I want to talk about the, uh, the intuition and deductive uh, theory of talk uh, about uh, it. Please talk please, about uh, it. What I know of them is that they believe to have a, a sort of knowledge that is a power from the experience. And you don't need to know it as the Empress, like John Locke, Bishop uh, Bankele, and so agree that. Okay, so the name is Buckley. Okay. Buckley. Buckley. Yeah. Yes, we met him level 200. Buckley. Yes. Like you're Buckley. saying, the dog is barking, but you, you add the little. So Buckley, even though it's spelled Buckley. Beckley, mm, Bishop Buckley. Go ahead. Yes, and so. As they think that you are, you need to experience something before you can get knowledge of it. But now, for this intuition or deduction, a thesis of knowledge, they believe that something is there, and you don't need it in you, or you are not born with it, for you to have knowledge is there of it. It is there already. So what you need to do, you just start to think of it, in, in with a deductive reason, and you can come up with mm. the good of it. So let's yeah. put. Uh, let's highlight the work of Descartes to verify this point. So Descartes trying to find certain of knowledge. In fact, okay, hold on for a minute. Thank you. Hold on for a minute. We'll, I'll give that to the class because I, we've had a good introduction from. Let me just add a mark to what you also said there. Yeah. So we will we will look at the specific authors and place them into. I mean, like if I saw the poop, I, I can place the poop panda catholicism, like I said earlier, and I'll have things that I can point to, to tell my audience why I think he's a Catholic, that I won't be able to see that with, let's say, a, a Pentecostal or a, give me, give me the versions or a, whatever, you know, Pentecostals don't do confession, for example, they don't, don't do penance, for example, you know, they don't do a, a, the Eucharist the way it is done by the Catholic, but they are both professing Christianity. This is the whole thing I'm trying to show you. So the rationalists of the intuition deduction type, you know, I am a charismatic, I believe I am, maybe a little bit Pentecostal as well. I will never ever confess to another human person, no. You see, and yet I'm a Christian, like a, a, an avowed, a, you know, Catholic who will, will do confession to another human person, but they don't think that they are wrong. And it is not a problem because that is how, that's their doctrinal emphasis. I'm trying to show you that there are Friday worshippers who will never sit with a woman that has, a, a, has gone to that part time of the month. No way. They can't even sit under the administration of a woman. No, because it could be that she's in her head. And that is a contamination for them. Some will never enter the auditorium with their slippers. Or the uh, sandals. Why? They think that is that is so bad. You are bringing. Uh, this, will you lie on your bed with your shoe or your sandal? That is the argument. You see that. So a place that you revere and honor and cherish, you don't go there with your mpabwa. But others too will have their shoes and whatever on the altar that people are laying offerings on. 
The offerings are coming, they're supposedly going to God, and their food. And, and do you see how I'm speaking? Even the ones that I do, I believe in. I can put on the shoes of intuition deduction thesis to see what they find wrong with the rationalist thesis. Uh, excuse me, uh, for what they find wrong with the innate knowledge thesis or innate concept thesis, and vice versa. So when we take the author and we say we, we, we label you or we think that you are more this than that, obviously there might be traces of all of them there. But I think that you are more innate knowledge than innate concept or intuition deduction than this. There has to be reasons why we are saying what we are saying. And so a lot of thinking would have gone through it before we discuss. And that's why the group will work on it. I wanted us to do the Majid paper today. A, a little preview for you so that it will inform your group discussion. The main campus is, I think, a, a week ahead. The city campus, I gave you a lot of time to settle down. The first week we did a full introduction. I didn't give you any assignment then. Because we're still constituting group. Even as of today, we are still constituting groups. I'm that patient for you. But if you drag, if if the generality of the class drags me, I don't want to laugh for you to know that I'm laughing. If you drag it, I will be hard. Hard that will bring the best out of you for you to earn good grades and better still to go through the program. So John, I'm just saying that we'll do the details of each author subsequently after the groups. And I want a group work because you can help each other, uh, you know, rise. We will help each other rise. When I come to class, I'll choose the one in the group that I want to present. So you better bring everybody up. If it's the person comes to sit down and look at, looks at everybody's face. When I when come to class and I'm led to call group 14 or group seven or group whatever, three, I say, come. When you come, I say, you, what Or you, ask me, please present what you have. If he or she messes up, the group messes up. So it is in your interest to help the other person. This is a good way to help us collaboratively learn and also hold each other up and then demand accountability from ourselves as group members, since you may stand for us. If you think someone is being recalcitrant or is doing, I don't care because maybe they have what they will eat after school. <laughs> so they don't really care about whether it is A or B. Then you prompt the instructor because I will hold you collectively accountable. May I have one of you read what I have projected, which is already in your resource too. I want to pick it from Zaka. Raise your hand, please, if you want to read. And or if you have a question, I'm glad to take it. We have a lot of people in the class and I want a very active class like you all already are. I see only four, five hands up. It is not good enough. It's sometimes, let me show you why I do that. Sometimes I'm checking if the people are actually there or they just logged on and they are going their way. That's how to check online for active participation, which is a requirement. And I assess the class, the general class as very active. And it influences how you are, you are grading and how you are uh, you know, monitoring them. So don't think that it is a nuisance. If, if I should just assume that there are 92 people, or maybe more, sitting down out of the 100 and something students. They are all there. I will know. You have to be active. That is what I'm looking for. Very good. Yamiche, please read for me. Thank you all. You can keep the hand up. This one, you will not be tired. Okay, so keep it up. Yamiche will read for us. Please unmute first and read the title. I put it there because I want you to read the title. Lecture three Innate Knowledge or concept or indispensability or superiority of reason. Very good. This was uh, put together in 2022, but I think it's still relevant for the day, for the 2023. So what is our task now? The very the various ways of being rationalist. Continued. We are going to continue the various ways of being rationalist. Let's recall some of the ways that we know we can be rationalist. I want a chorus answer. So you will mute and talk. Let me hear you. Be uh, inductive or deductive. Very good. Intuition, deduction, thesis, scholar. You could also be what? I want a chorus answer. In Don't worry. Uh, in it, the yes, in it, in it knowledge. Very good. In it Very good. That's fine. Let's 
superiority of reason to his dead, is not a necessity, indispensability of reason, all those. Okay. All right. Well done. So you are all there. Is Freeman around? Freeman, are you there? Okay. So I muted her before I asked the question. Now we will go to the innate knowledge season. Let me just read for me. The innate knowledge thesis, one, claims that we have knowledge of some truths as part of our rational nature. That's it. This is what uh, Gabriel uh, uh, touched on. It is in your resource tool there, okay? Generally, everybody has it at the resource tool. Also. So even if you haven't done a general research, which is a requirement for this course, look at your course outline very well. General research, group work, class participation, lecture, tutorial. It is all there if you like. I will project your course online when we are done at resource to overview. They are, they are there. I think I put that overview to and syllabus. For you to constantly reference and know how you'll be assessed, you will earn your grades. I'm confident in that. But you will work at it so that as required of you, you just didn't come to get grade and go. No. <laughs> the course must pass through you. So I'm saying that this was already there. If someone would just engage, and I believe generally people would have engaged it. And when you know something, you got to say it. Say it. Bring it out. So that it will show that, ah, like, uh, I don't know if it's this guy. I think it's level 400. The presentations they did last week and even uh, yesterday. Yesterday we didn't do all the presentations. I think I asked them to submit. There are people that come out during the presentation then you see that ah, but this student has always been in my class. he doesn't talk or she doesn't talk they're just ending the grades but when they have to speak or say something then you realize that i have such rich rich you know a uh, student or i don't want to sound too uh, boss, but i have such rich personalities amongst her but they are not talking <laughs> and being able to uh, disseminate what you know is part of the training. It's not enough to know and abide. If you have whatever food you like, jollof rice and chicken or what have you, all covered up, sitting on the table, looking very appetizing. It's a good job done. But until it gets into the tummy, my brother, the essence has been lost. Uh, you have to be able to communicate what you have. And it is a skill that you have to learn by practice, by involvement with others by standing before people sometimes, by trying to be articulate. Sometimes you know something, when you are asked to say, now it be brave, then it become plenty. It tells you that you haven't practiced the skill of saying what you want to communicate. If you become a minister later, and God will make us big, big, big people. Why are you sure? One thing you go and say in public will, will cost you, look at what is happening with there. The person perhaps they didn't intend that, but because it's a skill of speaking, and if you do it consistently, now you hear yourself when you're speaking. So you're able to be coherent, concise. And I want the student that God brings my way to impart, to learn that into class participation, they are rewarded, Papa. And I'm encouraging all to do it. So our friends that spoke this morning, especially our, our, our uh, site, Gabriel, I call him my son because I have a son called Gabriel did a good job. And what he said is not any Einstein thing that is far away that you have to go into the space to find it. It is there. Look at that. In it, no, it is accessible to everyone. Page three, after the introductory page, it is the next. So it's actually page two. Mm -hmm. Of your, your, your lecture slide, clearly labeled lecture three, in your resource too. If you have engaged it, you should be able to say something about today. It says that the innate knowledge thesis says that we have knowledge of some truths as part of our rationality. It is not any work we do to know it. I 
do you see in? You are working. You're, the mind is working to for the ground intuitive to that is just there okay but if you look at the the innate knowledge thesis it's saying that you didn't do anything is there and there's a critique that will come from Locke. i've already given you signals john Locke will critique the fact that children don't express that the fact that idiots he calls them idiots or if you like mad people don't express knowledge they don't do anything that shows you that you know that that kind of knowledge I've showed you such knowledge in the previous lecture we had last week. Truths that are supposedly known a priori by intuition or innately. They include metaphysical truths, mathematical truths of certain kinds. Not all knowledge, but certain kinds. I showed you instances that you've forgotten, play back the recording, or go to your resource tool and find a previous, like, do something yourself and get it. You will value it. Then, when everything is poured on you. So I was saying that the third critique, I'll, I'm giving you signals so that when you discuss as a group, you will know. The children think the idiots or mad people think. And then the dormancy of that claim of knowledge. Lock things that you say you know the thing already. And you are not aware that you know. <laughs> you see, how can that knowledge be dormantly sitting in your mind which is a memory in other words for Locke, Locke is insisting that if you know then you must be aware it shouldn't be what something i know but i i don't know that i know or i've forgotten that i know that's strict so we we'll have challenges with that also if we are assessing Locke, we will we'll tell him there are things sometimes we know but we have forgotten ah didn't we learn an element of formal knowledge look at these rules that we learned and where we knew them fingertips. We have come to disaster logic. Sometimes when we ask, it's as if it's which animal. Sometimes they ask, what is your name? Because you can say, eh, my name. Do I have a name? Not that you didn't know. You may have forgotten or it has been suppressed. So the dormancy of our knowledge claims. This is lock telling in little knowledge folks. You can't say that you have the knowledge by it is dormant. What are you inactive? Until you get a tweak that revives it until I see a sister person who is participating in the in beauty. Then I remember the concept of beauty. Locke has a problem with that. He thinks that if it is knowledge that is there, then it must be knowledge that you are aware of. You should be aware. So he's equating knowing to what? Being conscious of blah, blah, blah. So those who, when you start doing that, Remember that I typed on it now to help your discussions. Now, that concern lock races, including the children's own and the idiot's own, can all be counter challenged by someone who wants to give a rationalist or even like a Plato's response to, to him. You can think around that and play some of the recordings we have shared in, on my channel my academic channel and then link them to what you are seeing on your slides and what you are reading around. When you Google to find things, make it a bit focused so that you don't read all, everything all over the place. Okay, so my, my father, I call Joseph my father. Joseph, Ma, you all know my father is called Joseph. So I call him my father. Joseph, what you read, like the intuition one. I think I heard something like that also with Kinsley somewhere there. If you just Google intuition, you have so many things. women's intuition. I think no. This is intuition deduction thesis of rationalism. Search for that so that you can get a focused response. Uh, some, some, my level 200 went to search for the rationalist, uh, the functionalist response to the mind-body problem. If you go and type functionalism, ah, you get social jog, cons, even physical, uh, physical scientist responses. You have to be focused. Say, I'm searching for, so you write a functionalist response to the mind body problem in philosophy. So that the response you get in your search, your general library search or your, your Google search will be focused and give you something that is relevant to what you are discussing. Okay. It's part of the skill you must have. When you get to level 400, you do longest, you do a pencil thesis you will do stuff like that then you are prepared it's part of the training 
you have to know how to search for uh, content. Okay, all right. So Nyamiche, Nyamiche, give me your full name. If you write just Nyamiche, you lose marks. So I wrote Nyamiche down. I'm going to look for you in the system to give you a mark. And the ID is too, I'm a bit wary of that. I don't want that. Maybe, maybe the full name. If there is a clash of names, I will search for you. And actually, I see a lot of numbers there. Nyamiche what? Naomi, upon Nyamiche. Yeah, so your surname is Nyamiche. Oh. Okay. No, sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. Hey, Auntie Adwa, what's your surname? Who am I Basa Basa? Now I'm what? Oh, Opon. So the Opon has a G at the end, right? Please. Okay. Thank you very much for the reading. Now, can I have uh, Asantua say? I see Asantua or say Janet. Okay, it's my own Asantua. Janet Asantua. <laughs> Go ahead. Read what is on your screen for me, please. Okay, madam. Thank you. Welcome. Innate knowledge continuation. Two, like intuition deduction thesis. Innate knowledge thesis asserts the existence of knowledge gained a prior, independently prior, of prior. experience. Yes, so they don't disagree. They all subscribe to innate, uh, excuse me, knowledge that is gained prior to experience. With all the three types of rationalists we are studying, we say that we know something prior to experience. That is what makes them rationalists. But how we know that which we know already before experience is what distinguishes one from the other. I want to repeat that. Whether I'm in tuition deduction thesis, or I'm, look on my screen please, or I'm innate knowledge thesis, or in its concept thesis. We all, we all, all three of us, in other words, whether Pentecostal or Catholic or this, all believe in Christ, something like that. So that's why you are Christians. And we, we all subscribe to a priori knowledge. The prof says we should say a priori. I don't speak Latin, Latin, so. How I can spell it is how I say prior to a prior right, okay? Independently of experience, that's what that expression means, nothing much. So you, you know something before, prior, even before you experienced it. And at level 300 in philosophy, you know experience is not, I have encountered it before. No, you're talking generically if you say experience. Experience is empirical knowledge. I got to know it through the five senses. I don't want to repeat that. Okay. So gained prior to experience or independently of experience. It didn't depend on the five senses. That knowledge I have didn't get to me through the assistance of the five senses, whether seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, or smelling. Okay. So intuition deduction thesis, just like its compatriots, innate knowledge and innate concept, or believe that what? We have a priori knowledge. So that is not in contention for any rationalist. But why do we call these ones intuition deduction thesis kind of rationalism? And what makes them distinct from the innate knowledge one and the innate concept one? When they all already believe in what? A priori. Knowledge, that is knowledge gained independently of experience. I just told you that. The thing is about how we got that a priori knowledge, that knowledge, how, how, that is what distinguishes one from the other, okay? So whereas the first one, the innate knowledge folks, which Nyamiche read for us said, oh, we don't do anything to know it. We are just it. It is part of what we are as rational beings to have those kinds of knowledge. It is wrong to kill indiscriminately. God exists. You know already. It is part of what you are. Ah, how do you know if I know? You say, ah, you bar. But why are you asking a question like you're asking, why is the dog barking? Are you not a human being? Just like if it is a dog, it must bark. And you shouldn't ask a question, why should a dog be barking? The same way, if you are a human being, this is the argument. Rational nature, that is what you are by nature. You have that kind of knowledge already 
in your nature. So no one should ask, how did you know it? Just like no one should ask, why is a dog barking? Okay, why do, uh, why do dogs bark? Let, let's answer that, you see that. Maybe you say, oh, maybe someone was pa passing and he's barking. It's not that kind of thing. In other words, you are trying to say, what makes a dog bark? Or what, why is it that dogs don't hiss like snakes do, or dogs don't meow like cats do? Oh, it's just because it is a dog, simple. So he says it's part of your nature. In other words, you did nothing to acquire it. And if you say this, you will attract, I've already told you, certain critiques. The children one, who are also human beings, yet yeah, they don't show that sign of knowing that kind of truth that we have mentioned. The idiots, how can I know and not do, and stuff like that. Then you can also counter respond to Locke and folks who ask those questions. Is it everything you know that you do? When you are copying an exam, don't you know that it is wrong to copy? But people copy. <laughs> the man is a sugar that. So the sister will say, drop me at the junction there. Why? Because she knows that she shouldn't do that. But she's doing it. The brother will say, please, uh, you put the mic. When he's taking your phone or she's stealing your phone, does she come to display it for everyone? I'm stealing, you know, everybody look at me. No. Because she already knows. So sometimes we know, but we don't do. This is a counter response to uh, look at cool. the rest, play the recordings and learn them for your interaction. We'll touch on them in class, but you have to make an effort at acquiring knowledge that is all over the place there for you. Thank you, Janet. And so Janet just read this one for me, uh, read the, uh, the intuition deduction, showing that they all agree on a priority. Let me now take Ernestina. Ernestina, I can read the current, current slide. One mark for Janet. All right, madam. Yeah, right. Hmm. Thank you. In this knowledge continued, the difference between them rests in the accompanying understanding of how the a priori knowledge is gained. Very good. I have said that already, so I won't over elaborate. I just told you that the, the difference between the two so far, of course, you can include the innate concept, is in the how. I said that earlier. Good. Thank you, Ernestina. Because the hands are many, everyone will read just a slide. But I'm making a note of it on my file, so don't worry. When I close, I'll tell you all those who end marks. Evelyn Apia, my dear, please read from the gentleman. I'll call you. Uh, I'm going through my channel <laughs> alphabetically. Evelyn Apia, Jim. Right. Okay. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, my lady. Innate knowledge continued. Whereas intuition or deduction thesis intuition and subsequent deduction reasoning and how we come to acquire such a prior knowledge. Innate mm -hmm. knowledge thesis offers our rational nature as how we have such innate knowledge a prior. Very good. Very good. I've made a note of your name. And that one is also an elaboration on what I have already said. So you see that I just skipped the slide. Okay. One is telling you it is your nature. The other one is saying, when you intuit what seems to be obviously the case, I think, therefore I am. If I'm thinking, then there must be something that is doing the thinking. It's, a, it's just an obvious truth. Okay, but what the thing is, is what is, is a deduction. You deduce that then the thing has to be a mind. That's a deduction you make. Then from there, you say, okay, if the mind is such inadequate and can, this is how they cut now, I'm going ahead to tell you when you read it, you find it. Okay. If the mind can be faulted, if it is imperfect, it can make errors, it can be deceived, what have you, then it has imperfections. And as soon as I think of imperfect, then they must be perfect by deduction. I'm deducing that. What is the meaning of imperfect? A negation of perfection. So if I'm imperfect, then there has to be a perfect something that makes my imperfection meaningful. It's a deduction. And so if I can be deceived, then there must be that which cannot be deceived by deduction. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to talk 
evil if there is no good. This embodiment of the being that has all the opposites is what Descartes calls God, by deduction. So he's moving from intuition to deduction. And this is an activity. It's not I am it. It is dormantly there. You just don't know that you are this. Which lock critique to be difficult to think. That's why some would think of lock even as an uh, intuition deduction thesis kind of rationalist. Can you imagine? <sighs> don't say it anyway. <laughs> it means that you can just like you can have uh, 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 some Christians remove their slippers outside the building, just like Islam Islamic folks do. I said all of that last week. They do my rafi or the the veil like some that's like, like some Muslims do. And some won't eat pork, and some Muslims don't eat. And yet they are not the same. But it looks like there can be some overlaps because intuition deduction is not saying that you already know and you are forgotten or something like that. No, they are just talking about how you acquire the knowledge without the help of experience. The other person says, yes, you acquire the knowledge without the help of experience, but that knowledge was put there. That's innate knowledge. Intuition deduction, you did something to get it. So I could be, and when we advance a bit more, you see. Okay, so one is as part of our rational age, everything just read, let me ask someone to read slide number seven. Relate or connect to the person who said what at what time. It will help your revision. When you, you are revised, you say, oh, the view. Yeah, it's not the one that Santua read. That Santua's own was the, the innate knowledge. And it's seen to read the, the, the at first of Ajah. But someone else, I think it was Evelyn Happy. Ah, Evelyn, then yeah, she said this. That's why I'm asking them to read. Let's have Emmanuel or Henny read. Emmanuel, read the current slide. After you, excuse me, I'll take now before soon. Okay, Anna. Uh, innate knowledge continue. This is, this is. For the innate knowledge case, our innate knowledge is not learned through either sense, experience, or intuition and deduction. This is just part of our nature as rational beings. It has, in some way, been with us all along. No, Very good. Experience may trigger a process by which we bring this knowledge to consciousness, but the experience do not provide us with the knowledge itself. Well done. So the note is very important. And I think uh, Gabriel said that earlier. Let me write your name before I forget. Uh, the gentleman that just read is Emmanuel Ohene. Is Ohene your surname, sir? Yes, madam. OK. And I said I'll call Naomi Forsen next. I was just explaining that um, your colleague Gabriel touched on that, that if I see a beautiful girl passing, why would I say a beautiful girl? Because her, my eye seeing her helps me re remember what I already know beauty to be. She's participating. Eh? She belongs. She takes part in the concept of beauty. But I already knew beauty. It's not my seeing her that showed me what beauty is. No. My seeing here only helped me connect. It's like you have the magnet in your head, then you see pin passing by, and then the pin connects to the magnet that you already have. That is innate knowledge. Just like the switch in your room, and if we were at the lecture hall after, I would have used all these uh, instances. The switch in your room, when you press it, only helps you to activate the Akosombo's uh, electricity. Because we put them or wager wherever we are taking it from. The electricity that is there, the power is not in the switch, but the switch enables the power to be activated. That is the logic of the innate knowledge and innate concept. Folks, it says already part of your nature, dormantly there. But when I see a particular, see means experience, if I say, or I hear, or I touch, or I taste sweet orange. In other words, the orange that is participating, the photocopy. When I see the photocopy, it connects me to the original. Okay. So it brings it into consciousness, what is already there. And that is what I told you Locke has a problem with. He said, How can you say I know, but I'm not conscious of it? You are saying the knowledge is dormant. You know, but you are not conscious. He critiques that big time. So awareness, consciousness. When you are doing your research to produce your papers, 
on that topic when we get there. I suppose it will be very soon. Then you can do Locke's critique of innate ideas or the, the empiricist critique of the theory of innateness. Then you remember that I already gave you clues. I just don't want to spoon feed you too much. You'll be sick. Thank you, Emmanuel Henry. Naomi Forsen will do as an honest to read the next slide. And I think we are making good progress. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, me first. Please question. Then please question. I'll I'll take your question. I write it down. Don't worry. Not so that I don't write it just there. I want to wrap up on the in it, the introductory things like that. I'll take all questions. All right. So write it down. Now, me. If you waste too much time, I'll call Aram Abna. Abna. Aram Abna, go ahead. Okay. In it knowledge continue. For some rationalists, we gain the knowledge in an earlier existence. For others, God provided us with it at creation. Others say it is part of our nature through natural selection. Very good. You see what is happening? Now we are going into the innate knowledge thing proper. Some say we got it because we had a prior existence. Before you were blood clot in your mother's, your mother's womb, I knew you. That's church. We are church already. Don't go far. We don't think we are talking. Some believe in karma. You were in the world before you went and you've come back. So there are certain things you already know. Okay? You already know. Something that, no, 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 no. Uh, we lived somewhere. And if, you, if it sounds so strange to you, check your church doctrine or your, uh, you know, religious doctrine. It will put your, your mind at rest because you believe in your faith things very well. They are very important to you. <laughs> so if you are told that before the earth, uh, you know, uh, the lamp, the lamp of God was slain before the foundations of this earth, before the earth was founded. Answer the year two, we are sending for him. That's what it means. Before you, you are building a big house, you are, before you started the foundation, you got some animal and sacrificed him, it and then cut its blood and used it to do the pacification of the land before it started founding it. Before the foundations of this earth, check scripture, you see that the lamp was slain. It means that the lamp slain, it, the dying of the lamp. I'm speaking Christian doctrine of a certain kind now. Before he died physically, he, he had already been, he was killed. This, this is just a play, playing of the, <laughs> we are now playing what we already know as a movie. This, the writer has already finished writing the play. We have just gone to the cinema and we are watching what. So the one who wrote the play knows what is going to happen next and next and next and next. It's not anything that surprised him or her that oh, the killer has shot the blue man. Because he knows that the blue man will get up, will resurrect and come and do something like that. Okay. That means there seems to be a certain suggestion of a pre existence. And we see that in Plato, though it's not explicit about it. Because he says you already knew it when you stand before the forms, the form of beauty, the form of this, the form we have learned that that's level 100. I can't go back. Reality, okay. But that it is through the trauma of birth that you've forgotten. When you look at Plato's rationalism, you'll be amazed. Eh? When you were being pushed out of mommy's womb to take on flesh, because you are taking on human flesh to the empirica is a corruption. The senses are corrupting the original. You are seeing things, you are hearing things that is blaring your vision of the original. All these are in Plato. So it means you already existed in a certain form, but he's not explicit about it. That's why I take you to church. Before you were a blood clot, I knew you. So you may have had to exist in a certain form, maybe not physical, like bodily, this body. Maybe an incorruptible body, like the one who will take up when he comes again. For those who speak Christian language, you see that. So that is one way of thinking rationalism, innateness for that matter. Others say God gave it to you at creation. Others say it is part of our nature through natural selection, natural selection here, meaning science. So you already know, and, and you can think of even karma in that, that, that light if you want to. After you, you, you know, you existed, uh, then you died, and I pretend as a goat or a cow or a snake or a tree, depending on how you lived. 
So you know already. When you come into this human flesh, then you forget it. Just like you can't remember what you said last week at 12.36 on Friday. <laughs> you, you may not be able to remember exactly what you said, unless something extraordinary happened. If not, it's not as, you are not able to remember exactly what happened uh, 12.18 on the 12th of March, of, on the 12th of March, 2022. You remember that it didn't happen. Maybe if we prompt and prompt and prompt, oh, okay. when I met you under the tree there, and then, oh, Doc was coming, and then they say, hi, it's exactly one year. Mm. I have remembered. Didn't you, you know? You knew it. It was just dormant. <laughs> so don't be in a hurry to rubbish something that you don't understand, like certain beliefs or certain assumptions. Just let your inquiring mind ask the pertinent questions. No two ways about it. So these are various ways of thinking around uh, where the innateness uh, emanated from. And that was Era Mapla. And I want to give a mark for that. I'll put it down for you. Very good. Someone had a question. Let me take it. I really didn't want to do all this. So please unmute and ask your question. There are 12 hands up. I don't want to lower them. Whilst you do, Jeremiah will be on standby. I call one lady, one guy. I, I suppose Jeremiah Anyati is a, a guy. I may be wrong. Ask your question, sir, or ma'am. Madam, please, um, I wanted to ask the, the difference between the innate knowledge and the innate ideas. I, I said the theory of innateness is the bigger set. Knowledge means a statement of claim. You are a claim of uh, something that can be true or false. Let me just use that. It's a statement. That's you know something. A claim. It's not a word. Concepts are terms, the idea of table, the idea of beauty, uh, the idea of justice, the idea of the good. You see, these are terms. It's not a knowledge claim. So one is an innate knowledge where you are saying something like it is wrong to kill indiscriminately. Full stop. That's a statement. Everything that happens must have been caused by something, the principle of causality. That is a statement. It's a knowledge claim. It's not a concept, one word or one term. I mean, that, that is a simple way. Of, so you can, oftentimes people think that innate concept thesis is actually a subset of innate knowledge thesis. Not necessarily, but they are interrelated. Does that help? Yes, madam. Good. Let's continue. So I'll call, uh, I said I'll call Jeremiah and Yadi now. Please read for me, sir. Uh, okay, madam. Um, the more subjects included within the range of the more radical Very good. So here again, thank you, sir. And I can understand your background is by I will go do a small, small. Okay. So uh, your friends can read. The more subjects included within the range of the thesis, or the more controversial the claim to have knowledge in them, the more radical the form of rationalism. We have already said that. If you include so many supposed claims of truth in your innate, if you say, oh, it's not only claims like God exists, metaphysical claim, mm -hmm, or claims like it is wrong to kill indiscriminately. Maybe some of you have forgotten. Let me project that slide. It's from the previous uh, week. Mm -hmm. Please do your work. City campus, I have a soft spot for my city campus students. People know that. I'm able, I, I like to give them a bit more time to catch up and all that. But I won't pamper you unnecessarily. Because if I do that, fall to the, ch <laughs> the church over there that I can't continue giving you milk. When I do that, I'm not helping you. You don't grow bones. It's time to eat meat. Okay, so please do your homework. I'm going back to that slide just so that we can fill in the pothole, just in case there's one. Look at this one. This is slide number 11 of your, the one we did last week. What we did last week will be titled uh, lecture two. Okay. Some rationalists take, look at it, mathematics to be knowable by intuition deduction. So mathematical truths, ethical truths, like it is wrong to kill humans indiscriminately. 
uh, God exists, we have free will, that every event must have a cause. These are all supposed to be a priori truth. So if you're intuition deduction thesis person, you think I got to know such a priori truth by intuition and deduction. If you are in it concept or in it knowledge thesis subscriber, you will say, well, I got to know such truths immediately. So you have to know this. God exists. It's metaphysical. Everything that happens must have a cause. It's supposed to be like a necessary truth. You know it. It's self-evidently true. It's just there. It's, you know it. They didn't have to uh, uh, think through it. You know, things just don't happen. It, it, it seems to be something that is ingrained in our thinking. The sister has lost her teeth because she went to open her mouth extra wide and the brother slapped her. You got the money at the ATM because you punched in the right pin. You know, you got your name because you studied hard. And the man wants 20, he has to get busy. You know, things like that. Into ethical truths, mathematical truths, look at them on your screen, metaphysical claims. We have free will, mind and body are distinct. We saw all this in the previous lecture we had. And I'm building on that here to tell you that the innate knowledge folks also uh, accept these as known a priori. However, the known a priori, how did we know it a priori? The soul is just there by our nature. Depending on which innate knowledge folk you are reading, you say, oh, either God put it there or we, we got to know by natural deduction or we go to blah, blah, blah. So that's what we've been doing so far. Okay. And then our friend just read, if you have more claims of knowledge, more knowledge claims put into this theory. You say that all these, even the dress I wear next week, I know it innately. Who will become the uh, flag bearer of November for, I know that in Ghana, I mean, for MPP. I know it innately. What pen, uh, let me find a student's name. Zuera, we used to write tomorrow. I know it innately. Abba. Now you are including too many subjects. Look, within the supposed innately known knowledge, it will become too radical. Eh? An innate knowledge is. It will be too radical. I say, no, that one is too much. Maybe God exists, yes. Maybe it is wrong to kill indiscriminately, yes, because it's an ethical truth that we assume we know self-evident. But the color of hair, whether I'll dye my hair red or green, next three years, if you tell me that one too, we know it as part of our rational nature. It makes your, your innate knowledge thesis a radical one. In the same way, if what you are claiming to know innately is a controversial thing, I know that, uh, I know innately that uh, Nado is not the the right president that Ghana should have. So we have to take him off now and put, that is very controversial. Who will accept that? And so on. Okay, so the more subjects, themes, uh, claims of knowledge that you include in your thesis, whether innate knowledge, whether intuition deduction thesis, whether uh, innate concept, the more of them that you have there and the more controversial they are. Controversial means they raise controversy. The, it will make your view of rationalism a radical one. And I told you all this in the previous uh, class we had. You can play the recording. I told you some, some Christians are seen as fundamentalists. When you go into Islam, we have some, some views that are considered fundamentalist posture. They are two fundamentalists. My friend, you know, insisting on things. That is what we mean. It is too radical a position insisting that if it is this, it must be this and that and that. And the things they are including are too extreme. Extremists, look on my screen now. When you make the claim that those innate, innately known claims are beyond even the slightest doubt, that is radical. You only say it can, it can never be false. That is radical. But you may say that it is beyond reasonable doubt. That's softer. See, that is soft. 
But if you say it is not doubtful, it is beyond the slightest doubt that what you know, for example, that it is wrong to kill indiscriminately. People will raise objection. Of course, it discriminately makes it a bit soft. But think around those, okay? So we are looking at what will make a view uh, either radical or moderate. And I keep using the religion symbolism so that you grab it from there, then you can apply it in the rationalism discourse. Let's take, please, if you have read, put your hand down. Some also want to read. Prince Asari, then I'll come to my lady Nasiba. Go ahead, Prince. Please read what I put there. I don't, I've not seen Freeman yet. Is he okay? Does someone know the whereabouts of Freeman, please? No. Uh, Madam, please, this one is missing this morning. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, but is uh, he uh, on? Uh, is he uh, on now? Uh, is he uh -huh. I'm listening though. Uh, Doc, yeah. please, I think we have a, 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 a general meeting and then this thing, the exclusion is meeting, our first setting. So I think maybe you have joined the meeting. I will no, he's penalize him big time. No, he's if that is the reason why he's not here. No, no but if your phone is missing, everyone listen. I know you're out. <laughs> if your phone is missing, you don't need your phone necessarily to enter into a class. You are doing the deductive logic, not me. Okay. So tell Freeman that I have his interest at, at heart, like any other student. And I've noticed that he wasn't in class today. So he should yeah. tell me why he wasn't in class and I didn't yeah. receive any prompt from him as the oh. rep of the class. But I'm, I'm not even for there. the class. Don't worry, not even for the class. Don't worry, don't worry. Not even for the class, but for himself. I want him, I don't want him to work and work and work and work and work and make other people's lives comfortable. Then he is missing content that are examinable content. Okay, so let's leave it at that. Just let okay. it is on record that I want him to write to me and tell me why. An email. I don't want to WhatsApp. Okay, Prince Asari, let's go ahead. So please read your thing. I hope you didn't finish uh, finish reading. Go ahead. Prince, did you finish before I interrupted you? If you are done, then we'll ask someone else to read. If not, Prince, are you done reading, please? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Innate concepts. Innate concepts. One claims that we have some of the concepts into bracket ideas we employ in a particular subject area as part of our rational nature. Two, some of our concepts into bracket ideas are not gained from experience. Three, sense experiences may trigger a process by which they are brought to consciousness. Experience that, experience that does not provide the concept or determine the information they contain. Very good. So I'm not adding anything. The only difference is that the other one was knowledge, and this is concept. And I've explained that through Kinsley's question. And so here again, you see that uh, the claim, the, what I told you on my screen now, please look. Some suggest that innate knowledge thesis already contains innate concept thesis. Because the concept is the word, beauty, ugly, justice, stuff like that. And then the knowledge is the claim. To every event, there must be a cause. It is wrong to kill indiscriminately. God, as is, you know, uh, two plus three will give you five. So it's as if the concept addition, equality, uh, justice are already a part of the knowledge claims. And so they shouldn't be distinguished. But others think no. So that uh, there are certain instances where you can distinguish, you know, the innate knowledge claim from the innate concept clear and that is why they have been distinguished okay now the current screen and i want nasiba to read that and then we will start rounding off in about two minutes go ahead nasiba thank you prince i have your name okay thank you madam 
Welcome. In its concept is its continuation. Hmm. The concept by the more a concept seems to move from experience and the mental operation becomes a form on the more points may be may be claimed to be in it compared the experience of perfect triangles and paints in the referred text. Very good. So the referred text is what I, your your class rep is helping you organize so that everyone can have a copy if they wish to. It is in your own interest. I don't know what the, the intense, uh, whatever it is. I don't know how many men you know, just get it and have the text with you to aid your reading. Okay, but you see examples from there. The more removed, as far away, eh, the concept or the knowledge. So you can you can add, uh, apply this to unit knowledge as well. But here we are talking in it concept. The more that concept is far away from experience, it's something that you can get through experience. The higher the likelihood that you got it through in it. Oh, if it is not something that your five senses can easily help you see. I mean, if the senses can help us know it, why will it make sense to appeal to something outside the senses for it? Okay. So if the concept is distant, from experience, you can see equal triangle, the perfect triangle. No, every triangle you see is a, is, is a faulty one. The notion of equality, absolute beauty, perfect justice, they are not given to us in sensation. You don't see it through your five senses. So then it makes sense to think that such pure, perfect, so to speak, quote unquote, uh, notions, concepts are only gotten. In it. That is the whole point that Nasiba helped us see on that slide. I already talked about the indispensability of reason thesis. We already said it, so it will just be a read over. It is not necessary to the in it, um, the rationalism thesis. Okay, Daniela Chuchu can do that for us. Then Vicky Tete will take the last one. So, Daniela, read the current slide. Please be very snappy, everyone, okay? I don't want to take one minute of your time. I hope I'm able to. The indispensability of raising thesis. The thesis is thought necessary to the rationalist, to the rationalist thesis, but generally adopted by rationalists. It claims that experience cannot provide what we gain from reason. The knowledge we gain in a specific subject area as by intuition and deduction as well as the ideas and instances of knowledge in s that are innate to us could not have been gained by s true sense experience very good so this one is saying and Chocho, i have your mark down you see the, the pest is Chocho your surname online idea no please so what Okay, I didn't see the so at the end. Okay, so I corrected it here. Now, the indispensability of reason thesis, which we met last week, those two additional themes of rationalism that we said are just side plates. They are not essential to the main meal. And I use some examples to show you. If you got a jollof right, you say, buy me jollof. And the person comes with the jollof and chicken, but they didn't get maybe veggies, or they didn't get uh, macaroni, or they didn't get big beans. You can't say that because he or she didn't get this. It means she didn't get you the jollof. She brought you jollof and chicken. And you said she should go and buy jollof and chicken. And think, no, no, no. But the other ones augmented. If they are there, they make the, the, the composition, you know, a bit more elaborate and a better enjoyed. That is how you should think of the indispensability of reason thesis and the superiority of reason thesis. Okay, they are additions, catch up via this is also, you know, but they are not mean and so forth. And so you are either intuition deduction thesis theorist or innate knowledge theorist or innate concept theorist. These are the two indispensability of reason thesis and the superiority of reason. Look on your screen, the superiority of reason thesis are additional 
nkumios that you put on the table, some okra in the sauce there next to the uh, fufu and lice. They have cut the okra and boiled it and spiced it nicely. It's there just to add when you are doing the fufu and aponche kaka. Without it, you, have, you can't say the person didn't do fufu and aponche kaka. So take note. And we are bringing it up here again to show you how it represents itself, that view represents itself in the innate concept thesis. What is the indispensability of reason thesis that we saw earlier as represented here? It just says that experience, the five senses, experience is not, uh, you have worked there before, uh, bring uh, your, your years of experience in a company. No, that's a generic meaning of the word. We are talking philosophy and epistemology. The rationalism bit is what we are discussing. So when we say experience, we are talking empirical sense. I've said it two times already. Mm -hmm. These people are saying experience cannot, can't, can't. Not that it does it, but it's not as good as the, the, the as reason. No. The indispensability of reason thesis is saying that experience no go fit do one. cannot do it. That's strict. Like you tell the woman, you can't give birth. Are you God? You may be an experienced medical doctor. This is the generic sense of experience. Eh? Medical, but don't say things like that because science doesn't have all the answers. Tell her what I know so far. I'm unable to. I am unable to. I don't have the know how or the scientific research available now does not permit that. That's a safe statement to make. Not the arrogant one that tells the person you cannot give birth. Cannot, even virgins gave birth. So what? So experience cannot provide what we gain from reason is a statement of indispensability. Yeah, we are making reason look as if you just cannot do without reason. And I told you that, Johnny, bravo. We can do without you. We can do without you. We have just given you priority. It doesn't mean you are indispensable. Okay. And so that is what is going on there. Captured down there, uh, Daniela read it nicely. She says, the, pe the people are saying uh, that kind of innate knowledge could not have been gained by us through sense experience. It couldn't have happened with the sense experience. That is, these are the claims that attract the criticism. Because someone can tell you, you said the baby knew it already. Ah, but that one, you can have a physicalist interpretation of why the baby's pulling the breast and putting their mouth. They feel hungry. And when you feel hungry, the veins go this way and it makes the mouth open. And when the mouth open, the hands also go that way. And that's why it grabs them. That's physicalist. It doesn't have to be something I already know necessarily. When you speak like this, it cannot be this, it cannot be that. Then it attracts those critiques, okay? And so it is not necessary to the rationalist thesis. Now I can take, uh, I mentioned the name, I think it was Victoria, if I'm right. Yes, that's what I see on the five. Vicky, go ahead. Thank you, Madam. The superiority of reason thesis. This thesis is not necessary to the rationalist thesis, but also generally adopted by rationalists. Yeah. It's claimed that reason is superior to experience as a source of knowledge. The knowledge we gain in subject area S by intuition and deduction or have innately have innately is superior to any knowledge gained by sense experience. Very good. Or we have it innately, it's superior, okay? Here, you can see that we are talking innate concept, but I'm still referencing intuition deduction. So you should just put in there, this is for intuition, all of them, all the three. When they talk superiority of reason, they are saying that, oh, what I know by intuition deduction, that's for the intuition deduction folks, or what I know by innate knowledge, that's for the innate knowledge folks, or what I know by innate concept, I have it innately. Now listen, our query is this. You say it is superior. I can prioritize something. It doesn't mean it is superior to the other. Look, sometimes because of class time, if it is uh, 3.30 to 5.30 and at Legon, I may not be able to make it to church at six o'clock. If I finish 5.30, you finish student queries, when pack up by the time I get to church, it's 7:20 or 7:45. Church is done. But I will give priority to lecture, not because it is superior 
to church. No, it's a joke. <laughs> okay, so we may prioritize reason as the source of knowledge. Doesn't mean necessarily that it is superior. Superiority is a judgment. You're making a value judgment. And that is why and priority is just temporary, it's a time matter. Which one I want to place ahead of the other. Sometimes the family waits for me in the car. You think the lecture is superior to my family? <laughs> now, these examples should help you remember what we are doing. I use them because they will be very handy in remembering the technicalities. So superiority of reason is not necess necessarily a part of what rationalism must be. In other words, someone may be a rationalist and not claim that reason is superior to uh, you know, the senses. The person might just say, I prioritize reason over experience, even when I'm seeing the person pulling the phone from someone's back pocket. I shudder to think immediately that that means I've got a thief. My eyes may be seeing a thief, but perhaps if we went closer, and ask some critical questions and look beyond what the physical is telling me. I may even catch the thief and beyond that, get the syndicate, all the thieves included. Maybe I may do a better job, you see? So I don't want to just be taken in by my eyes saw it and my ears heard it and my mouth tasted. I want to ask beyond the physical. And so that is still a, a, a rationalist position, which is not saying therefore, that reason is superior to the, the senses, okay? That is why this is also not a requirement and we are done. Now, if you look on the screen, there are questions there. I ask you to the right, do you see why rationalism in the form of the intuition deduction thesis, excuse me, is also committed to epistemic foundationalism, big word, nothing much. Epistemic foundation. There must be epistemic from the word epistemology. A foundation, a grounds on which you are deducing your claims of knowledge. So Descartes does that. That's why we describe him as a foundationalist in level 100 and even level 200. You know one thing for certain, then based on that, you deduce others. So if you are an intuition deduction thesis kind of rationalist, you would naturally, or to a large extent, subscribe to an epistemic foundationalist approach. There should be one thing you know, or two that you know for certain, or you assume you know self-evidently. Then based on that one, you arrive at others. That is what uh, I think it was Kingsley that told us that, or Gabriel, I forgot it. I think it was Gabriel, yeah. So based on what you have intuitively, self-evidently, uh, without any effort, arrive at, you deduce the others. Intuitive truth unmediated, eh? There's no mediation. Then you deduce the others from it. So the one that didn't need any help, it was self-evidently true, is the one you call the what? The foundation, the foundation. Then you build the others on this. So you have to be committed to some kind of epistemic foundationalism if you were an intuition deduction thesis for. That is very important for you to meet. Now look at the other one. This 21st of March is an old date. You are not in March at all. This is October 2023. So be minded, but I'm using that slide. In addition to the topics discussed here, read the reference on the superiority of reason thesis and review how Plato and Descartes account for this thesis. Review. It means when we start engaging the Descartes Plato thing, see how they are interested in the additive. They are like Mahashanti people. Without the you know precursor in the soup, I say I didn't do the soup, the live soup. Everything is there, but I need the precursor in Sasoto or another man in the Okru. Just signals to show you that for some rationalists, they are staunch rationalists, they are radicals because they will insist on superiority of reason. And not just superiority of reason, they will even insist on the indispensability of reason thesis because they think that those are not side issues, they are necessities in the rationalist thesis. Okay? And then do you see why most rationalists will have to be committed to a denial of skepticism of a kind? The, if you are a rationalist, you will definitely accept that we can know something. So you can't be 
an absolute skeptic, the one who doubts all knowledge. I'm, I'm not touched on that because we did it in the first 100 and 200, the three kinds of rational uh, skepticism. Mm. Absolute skeptic, which is indefensible, the philosophical skeptic, which is what we are doing, and then the what's the common sense skepticism. If you've forgotten, revise them. I am done. Any questions? Okay, so I see three. I think they wanted to read. Let me see. And Estina's hand is up. It was only Gertrude. I couldn't get to call. And Gertrude is not, I'm not able to write Gertrude down. Gertrude is not a, uh, there will be thousand and one Gertrudes. Gertrude, get, get you, what is your surname? I don't want you to be doing that all the time. Okay. I said put your full name so that if I'm making a record of you, I'll know. What's your full name, Getty? Because I didn't call you. Maybe you wanted to make a comment. That would not be fair. Doji. Get you what? Doji. Dogbe. Dogbe, okay. So I've, I've put your name down. I put plus half there because you didn't talk. But maybe you have something to say. Uh, hey, half mark. If you get 78 and half, it can become 80. I thank you all very much. Thank you, Gabriel. <laughs> thank you, Gabriel. Thank you. All. Tell Freeman that if he doesn't do that, he's in serious trouble. John, your hand is up. Our time is up, though. But ask your question yes, very quick. <laughs> yes, Doc, please. Something is disturbing my mind. I just want the clarification of it. Okay, then can I just pause the recording if you don't mind? Okay. Thank you all yeah. for your time. I'll take your question shortly. I want to officially sign off. Then we have the recording there. All the best and take care. All right. Yeah.